Hi everyone, welcome to the next unit in geometry. So this is chapter two. It is so crucial that you use the notes that you were given in class to use them efficiently. Go through these videos, follow along and fill out the notes that we gave you so then you don't waste time. This page has all the homework. So you are also given the page of, you were given your packet of homework, so follow along. So um, this is 2.1. This is the start of your proofs unit. There's only a few lessons, so make sure to stay on it. So you have the notes like I do, and you're going to be filling them in as I do up here. So making conjectures, all right? Inductive reasoning, okay? So that's what we're going to put in here. Inductive reasoning is reasoning that uses a number of specific examples to arrive at a conclusion. When you assume that an observed pattern will continue, you're implying applying inductive reasoning. A concluding statement reached using the inductive reasoning is called a conjecture, hence the name of this section. So if I have to do if I have to do the dishes every other day, you could figure out what the next day was based on the pattern. Okay, so we're going to write a conjecture based on this information about the show times. So here are our show times. We need to figure out what is the difference between them. So if we look at 8.30 to 9.45, that is an hour and 15 minutes. Now let's see if that pattern keeps happening. Yep, an hour and 15, an hour and 15. So we need to figure out what the next time would be. So we're writing a conjecture. Okay, so if we follow this pattern of one hour and 15 minutes from 1215, the next show time would be 1.30 p.m. So that would be our conjecture. All right, so now let's look at our next one. So we have to follow this pattern. So I know it's a little bit hard to see but these are four segments put together. And then we put more segments around, so hence that there's 10 in that one because we added six to make this side. So now we need to look at the pattern. From each one, how much are we adding, okay? So the pattern doesn't have to be the exact num same number each time, but there has to be some pattern. So we add six, we add eight, we add 10, and we add 12. So what would be the next one? Adding 14. So what would that be? That would be 54. So by going from 40 and adding the pattern, the next segment would have to have 54 segments, okay? So let's draw that. <clears throat> All right, so this would be our next image our next figure with 54 segments in it. All right, now let's talk about, so first we have to look at the pattern, next we have to make a conjecture, okay? The conjecture is what is the next part of the pattern. Okay, so let's make conjectures based on this practice. So if I have a follow-up visit, so visits to the doctor or visits to get my nails done, woo! So if I go in December, the next time I go is May, October, March, what would be the next month? Okay, so we have to go, it says, so it's the next, so five months from then. So what is the fifth month after March? So April, May, June, July, August. So it would be August would be the next month based on my, based on the pattern. Okay, now let's look at 1B. What is the pattern? to go from one number to the next. So try that one and come back. So I can see that we're finding the difference of six every time for this next one. So what would be the next, um, the next one in the pattern would be subtracting by 14. So the conjecture is, so for 1A would be, okay, we have a visit every, you know, every five months, and then therefore the next one is August. The conjecture for 1B is finding, making the difference of negative 6 each time, so therefore it'd be negative 14. And now let's look at 1C. So 1C, we start with a triangle, and then the next one we are putting this upside down triangle in there. And then if you notice, in every single one of these triangles that's shaded, we have another triangle that fits in there, okay? So if we draw the, a triangle here, 
we draw our, our first image, then we draw our second image, then we draw our third image. Now let's look at each of our shaded areas. So in this, these are all our shaded areas. And then I'd have to add an upside down triangle in each of these shaded areas to complete the pattern of what I see. So let me add a different color so you can kind of see what I'm working with. So the red is shaded. So now I'm going to add a triangle to each one. Let me do a different color so you guys can see that. So triangle, triangle, and I'm adding triangles to each one. And what it makes, woohoo, sorry. What it makes is it makes these red shaded area, and then the following one, I'd have a, a, a triangle in each of the shaded areas from there. So it's just dividing it up more and more each time. All right, now let's get into more conjectures and looking at some geometric or algebraic relationships. Okay, so we're just moving right along. So we want to make a conjecture about each of these relationships. We want to draw examples or support them by giving examples. So either drawing them or supporting them with some information. So the t sum of two odd numbers. So let's pick one and five, and that is six. Okay, any two numbers, any two odd numbers, if I add them together, what is my result? Well, it looks like my result is an even number, okay? So the sum is an even number, all right? No matter what, any two, if I add up two odd numbers, it can be any two odd numbers, my result is an even answer. Fantastic. So I gave some examples, and I finished up the conjecture. All right, the next one, segments joining opposite vertices of a rectangle. So opposite vertices, okay? Opposite vertices. All right, they say the segments of them. So what is happening with the segments? What do we notice with the segments? The, the segments are congruent. That's what I notice with each of these examples. Okay, they have the same measurement. So they're congruent, or you can say they have the same measure. Okay, you can prove that by actually I'm measuring them with a ruler, but these two opposite from each other, and then these up here are opposite from each other. Therefore, same measurements. All right, now I want you to try these ones. So the sum of two even numbers, I want you to try that one, okay? I want you to see what you get. What happens when you make the sum of two even numbers? So this section is all about patterns. So the sum of two even numbers, the result of that is also an even number. Again, I can pick any two even numbers and see what my result is. That's also even. So a conjecture has to work every time or we need to try something else. All right, the relationship between A, B, and E, F. So we need to see what this relationship is. Okay, so A, B, okay is congruent to CD. So I can put little dashes for both of them so then you know. Okay, and then CD and EF are also congruent. So if these two are congruent and these two are congruent, therefore AB and EF have also have to be congruent. Okay? So AB is also equal to EF because all of them are the same. So I showed it using proof that all the segments are working. All right, the sum of squares of two consecutive natural numbers. Whew. Okay, so the sum of squares. So if I have one squared and I have two squared, it says consecutive. So it has to be the next ones. All right, so one squared and two squared, I have to figure out what that answer is. Or three squared and four squared. Okay, so, and it said the sum, so I got to add them together. So I have one squared, which is one, and two squared is four, so that answer is five. Three squared is nine, four squared is 16, and that's 25. 
Okay, so my answers look like to be odd numbers, and you could keep giving other examples, but you need to show proof. It's like showing your work. When you make a conjecture, you got to show work somehow, giving examples, drawing images, going from there. All right, so now this is talking about data. So in the video, there's some color. If you want to add color to yours, you feel free to. So we have to make a statistical graph, which they already made, okay? So making a statistical graph that best displays the data, if you notice, they had the information on here. They have the month, and they have the number of customers. They have the data on here. So now we have to make a conjecture based on what the owner wants. The owner wants to see if they need to have more servers. Is there more business on weekends? Okay, so the total doesn't really help us out. Okay, but let's look at Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So if you notice, Friday is the bottom one. Friday is the bottom one, and Saturday and Sunday pretty much had the same inf the same amount of customers coming both days. So make a conjecture. Yes, you need to have more servers because on Friday and Saturday. Most, you know, most business is on the weekends, so we need to increase the serve, this, um, the amount of servers. So then you make sure that people aren't waiting too long, okay? So most business on the weekends. Because if, if it's the total is up there, most of your business is happening right here, okay? So therefore, increase the number of servers. So can you look at data and answer conjectures? Can you look at different kinds of information to get to a conjecture? All right, this is our favorite thing to do. Let's look at the opposite. All right, so now we have to now we're talking about a counterexample, which means prove me wrong, okay? So in all cases, it has to be proven that it works. If it doesn't work sometime, then the conjecture doesn't work, okay? It's a false statement. So if you can prove that something is wrong, therefore it can't be a conjecture. So if n is a real number, then n squared is greater than n. All right, well, let's see. 2 squared is greater than 2. Yes, 4 is greater than 2. So that works for this one. But it has to work every single time. Well, I know one example that this doesn't work. 1 squared is greater than 1. 1 squared is 1. That is not greater than 1. Therefore, that's a counterexample. Therefore, that conjecture is false. Okay? All right. If JK and KL are equal, then K is the midpoint of JL. So is K on this line? It is not, so therefore it cannot be the midpoint, okay? K is not collinear with points J and L. Therefore, it can't be the midpoint, all right? So here's more guided practice of counterexamples. If N is a real number, then negative N is a negative number. All right, so we have to prove that. So n is a real number. So let's say that n equals negative 5, okay? Let's say then negative n is a negative number. All right, so I have negative and negative n is negative 5. So I'm going to plug in that negative 5, and two negatives make a positive 5. Therefore, this is wrong. Your answer was a positive answer, not a negative. Therefore, that is false statement. That's a false conjecture. All right, ABC is congruent to DBE, then ABC and DBE are vertical angles. All right, so we have to give an example of how this is not always true. Conjecture always has to be true, okay? So A, so let's have B be the, equal, be the inside. So I have A, B, C, and then I'm going to have D on this line also, D, B, E. Those are not vertical angles, but they're congruent and they can add up to 90 degrees. So that's an example of them not being vertical. Remember, vertical angles would be across away from each other, but not every time are congruent angles vertical. All right, so that was the end of our notes. So please make sure you complete the homework. The homework 
is on this first page, okay, and look at your homework packet and complete that. Please ask questions um, in class to your teachers if you have any questions on this, on this section. Have a great day.